Hi everyone, Mr. Sam here, grade 5 teacher and creator of Graphic Universe. In this video, we will be multiplying fractions. Let's get started. This multiplying fractions worksheet has eight problems. Multiply the numerators, then multiply the denominators. Very simple process. Example, one-half times two-thirds. When you multiply the numerators, one times two, you get two. When you multiply the denominators, two times three equals six. So one-half times two-thirds is two-sixths. In this worksheet, you will see the standard X for the multiplication symbol. You will also see a dot. The operation can be expressed with both symbols, so it was added both ways in this worksheet. Number one, three-fourths times two-thirds. When you multiply the numerators, three times two equals six, and four times three equals 12. Six-twelfths can be reduced or simplified. We'll do that at the end. Next problem, eight-twelfths times two-thirds. Now another strategy is reducing the fraction first and then multiplying. We will also do that at the end. So we have eight times two is 16, and 12 times three is 36. Next problem, four-fifths times seven-sixths. Four times seven is 28, and five times six is 30. Next problem, two-sevenths times five-eighths. Two times five is 10, and seven times eight is 56. Five-eighths times four-tenths. Five times four is 20, and eight times 10 is 80. Three-eighths times six-ninths. Three times six is 18, and eight times nine is 72. Now we have a whole number, three, times two-ninths. So basically, a fraction, two-ninths, is saying two divided by nine. So if we have a whole number, it is the same, we can convert it into an improper fraction by saying three divided by one. And what happens when we divide three by one? We get three. That's how we can write this as an improper fraction. So then we solve. Three times two is six, and one times nine is nine. Again, we have a whole number. Two thirds times five. We now know that a, a fraction is just a division problem, two divided by three. So if we want to turn five into a fraction, we can say five divided by one, and we have an improper fraction. If you divide five by one, you get five. So now we multiply. Two times five is 10, and three times one is three. Now, we have completed all of our problems. Let's go back and simplify. In simplifying fractions, we have to find the greatest common factor, or the GFC. You can see the simplifying fractions video to further inform you for simplifying fractions. But we know that 12 is a multiple of 6. 
So the greatest common factor is 6. So we would divide both by 6, and we get 1 half. Now, when we simplify 1636, we can divide it by 4. We then get 4 ninths. As I said earlier, we can reduce the fractions first and then multiply. So if we reduce this fraction or simplify it by finding the GFC of 4, we would get 2 thirds. Then we multiply it by 2 thirds and we get 4 ninths. Reducing fractions first can be easier. It is easier because then you will not have bigger numbers when you get your product and it is easier to simplify by the end. Then we have 28 thirtieths. If we divide these by 2, the greatest common factor, we get 14 fifteenths. Now we have 10 fifty-sixths. These can each be divided by 2, which will give us 5 twenty-eighths. Now, this one isn't too bad to simplify. You can divide by 20 and get 1 fourth. Or if you simplify the fraction first, you can divide these by 2. You would get 1 fifth. Then you get <clears throat> 5 fortieths which can be reduced to one-fourth. Either way, it's pretty simple. Next, 1870 seconds. Both have the greatest common factor of 18. When divide the numerator and denominator by 18, you get one-fourth. But it's better to reduce first 6 ninths can be reduced to 2 thirds. When you multiply, you get 6 twenty fourths, which is much easier to reduce. Both have the greatest common factor of 6, which simplifies to 1 fourth. 6 ninths simply reduces, like before, to 2 thirds. And now, our final one, we have an improper fraction. Improper fractions can then be converted into a mixed number. To do that, you simply divide the numerator by the denominator. 3 can go into 10 three times. The remainder is 1, which is the numerator, and the denominator stays the same. For more information about converting improper fractions to mixed fractions, please see that video. On the second page, we have two more problems. Multiplying mixed fractions by proper fractions and multiplying whole numbers by mixed fractions. The first thing you need to do is convert the mixed fraction to an improper fraction. To do that, in the numerator, you multiply the denominator by the whole number, then add the numerator, and the denominator stays the same. 
by order of operations, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 5 in the numerator. Denominator stays the same. And we have 17 sixths. So, when converting to an improper fraction, we get 17 sixths. 17 times 2 is 34, and 6 times 9, 56. So we have 34, 56. Now, 6 times 4 and 3 fourths. First, we have to convert the whole number to an improper fraction. Simply put that whole number as the numerator and the denominator as 1. Now we have to convert the mixed number to an improper fraction. In the numerator, we multiply the denominator by the whole number and add the numerator. Denominator stays the same. First we multiply 4 times 4 is 16 plus 3 over 4. 16 plus 3 is 19 fourths. So, we have 6 over 1 times 19 over 4. 6 times 19 is 114. 1 times 4 is 4. Now, if we want to convert this improper fraction into a mixed number, you would divide the numerator by the denominator. How many 4s can go into 114? You can have 28. The remainder is 2, which becomes our numerator, and the denominator stays the same. I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like more educational resources, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, graphic.universe, and my Instagram. I can also be found on Facebook at graphic.universe. Thank you.